Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to add more PlayStation games to your PlayStation Classic using BleemSync. The newest version has just been released 0.4.0 and has a lot of updates. So to begin with, I want to thank Dr. Dalek and everybody else involved with getting this program running. All you need to do this is just a flash drive. So there's two things we have to do to prepare our flash drive. We have to format it to FAT32 and we have to rename the drive to Sony. So right here you can see our flash drive. We're going to right click it, format, make sure that FAT32 is selected, make sure the quick format option is selected, hit start, and then we have the format complete message. After it's formatted, right click the drive again, go to rename. You have to name your drive Sony, just like this, all capital letters, S-O-N-Y. So now that our flash drive is prepared, next is to move on the game types. As of right now, BleemSync will only accept bin and Q files. The doctor does have plans for PBP support later. So let's go over what we have to do with different bin and Q file types. If you have just a bin and a Q, you're fine. You don't have to do anything to the files. Also for multi-disc games, as long as you have bin and Q files for each disc, you're fine as well. If you have only a bin file, you will have to create a Q file. I have a website in my description to do that. I believe it is called neilboos.com. DK. So this is what the website will look like. All you have to do is take your bin file, drag it to this box right here, and you'll be given some text. If you go back to the folder where your bin is, just right click, go to new text document. Double click on that text document to open it up. Copy this text right here and just paste it into that document. Go to file, save. Now we're going to rename this file. It has to be named the same as the bin file. Take out the TXT at the end change that to Q. So it should look just like this. Once you click out of it, it'll say if you're changing the file extension, it may become unusable. Click yes anyway. Now you have your bin and Q file. If you have a game with multiple bins, you will have to combine those bins if you're using the automatic scraping feature of BleemSync. To do that, you want to use a program called CD Mage. The version I have is B5. I will have a link in my description again for this program. All you have to do with CD Mage is go to the open button. You're going to navigate to where your bin files and your Q file is. You're going to double click on the Q file. You should see each track in this window right here. Just go to file, save as. This is going to create a new Q file. If it's in the same place as your old file, that's fine. Just hit save. It'll ask if you want to replace it. Hit yes. Leave everything the same on this screen right here. Click OK. Make sure you wait until you have the message that save completed successfully. Now you can close CD Mage. If you go back to the folder where you had your multiple bins, you see you will have a single bin here. You can now get rid of your multiple bins and then you have one bin in queue. So now that we've prepared our flash drive and we have our game set up, we can open up our BlameSync folder. Your folder should look like this. It may have a system folder as well. You could ignore that. The only two folders we're going to be doing anything with is this BleemSync and the games folder. The doc has already made a couple of templates for you. If you go into one of the folders here, you'll see how your setup should look. Make sure you take this INI and config file and put it somewhere on your desktop or somewhere safe. You may need these later. So we're gonna start fresh. Go into the games folder. You're gonna create folders that are numbered in sequential order for however many games you wanna add. We're gonna add four games, so we're gonna add two more folders here. Just right click, go to new, folder, We'll name that one three and then we'll do the same for a fourth. I think the most added with BleemSync is probably over 35, but it hasn't been tested for the max amount yet. So we're going to go into our first folder. We're going to right click again, go to new folder. This folder needs to be named game data with a capital G and a capital D. So the final folder structure should look like this. You have BleemSync, games, one or whatever number folder, game data, and then in the game data folder, your bin and queue. That's all you have to do. We're gonna add our other three games now. Once you have everything where it needs to be, go back to your initial BleemSync folder. Now we're going to this BleemSync folder. I'm gonna scroll down until you see the BleemSync EXE. Double click that. You may get this pop-up saying that Windows protected your PC. You have to allow BleemSync to have access to your computer for it to work. So click the run anyway option. You'll get this dialog box right here. That means that BleemSync is working and once it disappears, everything should be good. So one of the new features of 0.4.0 is the ability to automatically scrape for the game INI files and the box art. So if we go into our games, we go to our Parasite Eve folder, you'll see that we have a game INI and then a ping file. Now this being a very early release still, it won't work on every game. If you go into one of our other game files, you'll see that we still only have our bin and queue. This is where the original INI and config files come in. So take those INI and config files that you saved earlier, and we're gonna paste them into any other game data folder that didn't automatically get scraped for the box art, 
or the game.ini file. So if the scraper didn't recognize your game, you have to manually configure this INI file. Just click your Q file until you're able to edit it. Right click the text, copy. Now you can double click the INI file and now we have to manually change this information here. So under disks, you're just gonna paste whatever the Q name is called. This has to match the Q file. Change the title to the title of the game. Change the publisher, the number of players, and the year released. Then go to File and Save. Then continue that with any games that weren't scrapped correctly. So after you've edited your game INI files, you have to add the box art. They have to be in PNG format. They have to be named exactly as your Q file. The dimensions are 226 pixels by 226 pixels. If you add something that's a different dimension, the system should alter it to fit on the screen automatically. So your final game data folder should look like this. You should have a bin and Q, a ping file, game INI, and a config file. Since we had to manually add some things, you have to go back to BleemSync, run it one more time. You're gonna take all these files, copy them, and then paste them into the root of the drive that you prepared before. Because the flash drive is going into the second player spot, you can only use this hack with one player. But with 0.4.0, that changes everything. A new feature was added where you can have a powered USB hub, and then you plug your second controller into that, and then you can play with two players. That's only on the newest version. So after you safely removed your flash drive, it's time to insert it into the PlayStation Classic. Just put it into the second controller port. Now when you power your system on, this LED should blink orange and green. So let's turn it on. There's the green. There we go. That's a good sign. It means that the script was running and we're good to go. So let's go over to our PlayStation Classic and take a look and see how this works. Also, make sure you check out Tuberve Junior's YouTube channel. He is a Spanish content creator. He makes tutorials in Spanish and he is covering BleemSync as well. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description as well as a link to his tutorial video. Also, the doc did mention that the boot may be a little longer than normal because of how the script is ran, but it looks like we got everything we were looking for. Crash Team Racing, Castlevania Bloody Roar 2, and Parasite Eve. Now, everything is written to the USB, nothing is written to the console itself, including memory card saves and resume points. We're gonna boot up Crash Team Racing real quick to see how it runs. So as you can see here, Crash Team Racing runs pretty good. I'm not having any issues with this game at all. Now, another feature of BleemSync is the ability to get to that emulator menu that everybody was so excited about by plugging in a keyboard. Now you can do that right here. If you hold down select and triangle, you have access to the emulator menu. I don't have a lot of experience with this. There are a lot of options you can play around with here. And as far as I know, anything you change here won't be saved permanently. Also, when exiting the game through this menu, you will not get a resume point. You have to exit by hitting the reset button on the console if you do want that. But like I mentioned before, resume points work fine hitting the reset button. And if we go to our memory card, you see we have a save for Crash Team Racing. So that's it. I wanna thank Dr. Dalek one more time for all the work and effort, all the hours he's put into getting this working for you guys and everybody else involved with BlameSync. If you have any questions, there is a readme on his GitHub page or you can go to the Mod My Classic Discord channel where there is a support channel that you can come to for any issues. Just remember, this is still a very, very early release, so there will be some bugs associated with it, and you assume all risks that you take by using software like this. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.